Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, uh, we will uh, continue with our lecture series uh, on this optimal control guidance and estimation course. Uh, last lecture we have started this uh, recent uh, ideas of integrated uh, guidance and control things like that and here we will uh, we'll also talk about estimation this particular uh, lecture and we will continue further this development with uh, first integrated estimation and guidance and then followed by integrated estimation guidance and control as well. So, uh, let us see and we will not be able to cover everything, but we will cover uh, uh, I mean what uh, we have come up with uh, with the last couple of years and uh, details on that actually really. All right, so the motivation turns out to be something like this, uh, obviously the interest is to fuse the estimation guidance and control loops at various levels and typically the benefits arise because integrated designs are capable of retaining and exploiting the synergy between various subsystems. And then integrated approaches can be categorized into various categories, uh, uh, first things on can be something like integrated guidance and control and then integrated estimation and guidance and integrated estimation guidance and control as well. Okay. Now, what it turns out that uh, this particular uh, when uh, topic when we talk about integrated estimation and all that, uh, it has a uh, lot more impact when we talk about estimation of exogenous input for control design. In other words, something like missile guidance, where the target information is estimated, not really recovered from the from the missile's own uh, instrument system. Actually, now th those are typically good. What what is not good is exogenous input that we collect from our own sensors, and how can you actually fuse that into the guidance control design uh, loops so that the efficiency or performance can be much better. Actually, so that's what we are interested in. So the philosophy, as we uh, saw that in the in the last class. What we did uh, is typically this one guidance and control, okay. but uh, suppose somebody wants to do this way estimate and guidance then that leads to this uh, this concept of integrated estimation and guidance and also somebody can think about putting something in together then it, uh, it is integrated estimation guidance and control and uh, some people would uh, like to call it as uh, integrated guidance and control and estimation IGC and E. Okay. So, anyway, so the concept is either you talk about IEG here or you talk about IEGC here. So, both of that we will talk in uh, in this lecture as uh, some sort of a little overview of uh, what is uh, our own way of doing things actually. And this is a different representation again, where this, this picture is slightly confusing, but what you are typically proposing here is something a little more elaborately something like this. And remember the, the control when you talk about here this particular block is actually consists of uh, two loops uh, outer loop and inner loop. Outer loop is something that you take uh, lateral acceleration commands from guidance loop and try to generate the corresponding body rates uh, especially the pitch and yaw rates and then uh, roll rate stabilization and things like that. Uh, so, pitch, pitch, pitch row, I mean roll pitch and yaw once it is available go through inner loop to generate the control surface deflection and then pass it through the actual dynamics and then simulate back and all that actually. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean this particular output what you talk about they can be fed into and uh, they, they can be decomposed into this uh, this four control surface deflections uh, delta 1 to delta 4 and then uh, you fed it uh, fed it to the missile actually with, uh, as an actuator input sort of thing. So, that that part is uh, what it is and what you are talking here is uh, either this part either estimator and guidance together or this part okay, where the outer loop of the of the control is also integrated. That means, uh, we directly generate this uh, this uh, body rates from after doing the estimation actually. So, that kind of uh, things can uh, can come in basically that way. All right, the topics that you are covering here is uh, is taken from uh, two of our own papers. Uh, first thing is uh, what we presented in 2010 AIAA GNC conference and subsequently in 2011 what we presented we will talk, uh, talk next actually. So, these two, two, two papers are typically the material that is I mean typically contain the material that I am going to talk today actually. So, those of you are interested you can see 
may this paper for more details actually now let the first thing is, uh, is uh, this first paper uh, which talks about a zero effort meet miss based effective integrated estimation and guidance of interceptors in terminal phase so these are uh, details of the of the work actually so again the reference in detail is something here so again we are talking uh, something like integrated estimation and guidance we are not typically bothered about control part as it is however the simulation thing that you are going to show also talks about control in the loop and uh, and uh, it is not necess i mean it, the results that you see here are not uh, from point mass uh, simulation whatever is i mean even if it is uh, something like this okay okay this part is also included as part of the simulation all that what you see here actually okay then what you see, what you present the results is uh, is the full six of uh, simulation results essentially all right so let's get started uh, how do we do it and things like that and the concept is uh, something like this first thing the lateral acceleration commands uh, have been obtained as an algebraic function of the estimated states that means there is uh, typically no delay okay so you estimate certain states and then directly compute the uh, the lateral acceleration required for the missile as uh, some sort of a direct algebraic function actually okay how can you do that because this is a kind of motivated from this uh, this guidance see pn guidance can be uh, can be represented okay what we know is something like this pn guidance is typically implemented as something like uh, a lateral acceleration is something like uh, navigation constant and then v either vm or vc closing velocity times lambda dot okay that is uh, line of sight rate but this is also equivalent to something like this okay uh, which is some uh, which is called as uh, uh, see this this uh, zdm is called as something like zero effort miss and then the time to go square so it can be actually shown that this uh, same expression can be written something like this so now the idea is somehow if we can estimate this uh, this zdm as well as tgo then we got it actually we got the lateral lateral acceleration so how can you do that that's the whole idea there and this requires lot of algebra and then, and then implementation in the framework of ekf and things like that so let us see how how do you do that actually okay so essentially in the state estimation this uh, this zdm and tgo are are actually states and then uh, using state estimation concepts that you have studied in in carbon filtering and all that we estimate and then directly compute uh, in some sort of formula like this okay now we'll talk in we'll talk those details uh, as we go along actually so just a little bit summary of uh, our ekf and uh, all the results that you see are in the in the framework of ekf but someone wants to implement ukf uh, you can also do that what the uh, concept remains same we have this st state equation where this uh, i mean non linear equation state equation i mean this uh, corrupted by noise and then output equation uh, corrupted by noise as well both of these are nonlinear equations and then typically you proceed like this you start with some initialization of states as well as covariance matrix covariance matrix and then compute the gain and then follow the i mean this update the states actually okay update the states as well as uh, is uh, covariance matrix okay then you propagate the states and covariance matrix so this update happens in, in discrete time and uh, and propagation happens in continuous time so all these details we have uh, seen before so the i mean all these techniques are available so what matters in a particular problem is how do you formulate the problem okay right here once this is available rest of the things we can have this tuning process and then uh, and then our prior experience can come in and things like that but given a problem how do you actually formulate this to, to begin with and then go ahead and solve it actually so that is what you are interested so essentially we will so will not talk too much on implementation details of kalman filtering we have already done that so what we really want to see is how do we come up with these two these two equations state equation and output equation in this particular given problem rest of the things are typical i mean i can if you allow me i can say that is mechanical actually right. uh all right so this is how it is so let us uh, try to see that so what you are interested is okay obviously in the in the implementation if you see in kalman filtering this w and v are never used actually okay so the covariance of w w transpose expected value of w w transpose things like that uh, are, are like q r and things like that are typically part of the design but w and v themselves are not part of the design 
So, we need not come up with this part of it as part of the formulation. We implicitly assume that these are there basically that way. So, what we mean is how do you write the state equation and output equation and then we can we can mathematically write something like that and start guessing this initial condition as well as covariance matrix and, and carry out for further algebra basically. Alright, so what you are interested in is something like this. Okay, x dot is f of f of x plus g of x times u. It, uh, this dynamics happens to be kind of control affine. So we can write it this way. It really doesn't matter what way you write. But if you if you write it already like this, then uh, okay, control computation becomes slightly easier and all the details. So we are not too much concerned about that because this particular problem is uh, is essentially an estimation problem. And this is your sensor output. Okay, so these two we have to write. But also remember this z and which uh, which typically represents uh, the desired output, they are nothing but the measure lateral acceleration and these lateral accelerations are all also computed as an algebraic function of the estimated state actually. Okay, so, that is the whole beauty here. Alright, so state variables uh, we are taking as uh, these, these components of uh, this ZDM along the xyz component uh, and then the relative velocity along xyz as well as the target uh, accelerations along x, y, z and time to go, t go. So, we have 3 coming from here, 3 coming from here, 3 coming from here and 1. So, essentially it is a 10 state estimation problem actually and these are uh, not uh, that uh, easy numerically essentially. But yeah, none, nonetheless you have to do that uh, because we uh, we want to derive additional benefits and things like that actually. So, we cannot escape from there. And what are the measurement thing available to us? So typically, these are uh, range, and uh, we are assuming there is a seeker because it's a terminal phase uh, problem. Uh, distance between initial separation between missile and target is not very much, so we assume that uh, these are seeker-based estimation and all that. Uh, seekers are also available, which can give us range, range rate, as well as this uh, this gimbal angles and their rates actually. Okay, so these these gimbal angles are something like. Uh, the seeker frame uh, uh, compare I mean uh, whatever angle it makes with respect to the body frame actually we will we'll give you some diagrams as we go along also. And the output variables are nothing but uh, lateral oscillations in x, y, z components actually. But ultimately remember we want output uh, I mean this uh, this lateral oscillations in, in body frame because that is what the aerodynamics will come into picture and then try to uh, realize it. Uh, whereas, all this formulation that we talk about ZDM, ZDM uh, components and then velocity components everything else is typically in the inertial frame. Okay. So, inertial frame the, the estimation goes on and then using this uh, transformation matrices and all uh, and more of that you can see it in, the, in my flight dynamics lectures and all. So, using those uh, transformation matrix uh, we will be able to convert it to the, the body frame and things like that. Okay. So, remember these are our uh, states, these are our measured outputs and these are our desired outputs which are which we, have, we want to feed it into the autopilot or control design loop actually. So, to go ahead uh, we want this dynamics. So, some basic concepts first there is a missile here, there is a target here, uh, it is just a 2D picture sort of thing, there is a reference line and there is uh, something like LOS angle and these are typical missile guidance diagram sort of thing. So, the ZDM along this y direction if you see this. Okay, so, very simple it, it talks about the initial separation delta y plus delta v y times t go whatever delta v y is defined as something like v t minus v m. So, and that is what is assumed to be a uh, kind of uh, constant here. Okay, If you assume that then z d m y is, is something like this actually. So, when you put it back here okay, z d m then the d by d t of z d m then uh, it turns out to be something like this actually. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So there are different levels of uh, kind of uh, computation that you can propose. For example, if you if somebody wants, uh, I mean, uh, to incorporate this uh, delta v y dot also, this will be plus uh, this uh, half times delta v y dot uh, times t go square and all that actually. Okay. So that is uh, depending on the uh, on the formulation essentially. Okay. Essentially, it comes from our uh, high, I mean uh, little bit early physics that we are aware of that uh, distance is nothing but uh, I mean distance initial distance plus uh, v times t plus uh, half a t square sort of thing. Actually, okay. So if you if you see that then zdm y is uh, delta y plus delta v y point times t go. Here we are assuming that delta v is not really 
very constant but it is quasi steady sort of thing so every time it is updated there is a there is a vy change okay delta vy dot is accounted here of course it's a real, okay but as far as zdm component uh, i mean computation is concerned that you are assuming that delta vy is is constant actually so is a little bit discrepancy but that is how it's subject to our prerogative of how we formulate the problem actually okay and uh, I mean, this simplicity is necessary to have the output formulation uh, in a good way. Output equation actually, we'll we'll see that in a couple of slides later. Anyway, coming back to that, uh, this is what it is. The dy dt of that is the derivative of this delta y dot plus derivative of the whole thing, which it talks about delta v y dot plus t go plus delta v y times t go dot. Okay, and uh, where delta v y dot is nothing but target deceleration in the y direction minus initial deceleration in the y direction. So this this can be comp computed that way. Now what about time to go? T go is very crude way. It is represented as delta r by delta r dot. So T go is minus of that really. So then uh, T go dot. It's very easy to uh, see that. It's just uh, uh, d d y d t of T go. So compute it this way. This times the delta r dot uh, times uh, Derivative of that minus delta r times double derivative of that divided by delta r dot square sort of thing. Then these two will cancel out. So this is essentially negative of one minus this term actually. So t go dot we derive this way, and delta v y dot is derived that way, and uh, and uh, z m y divided by t of that is derived that way. And this what you see it here, this y direction can be extended to x and z components also basically. So taken together, we can write it something like this. Okay, so this uh, Z M X direction, same very similar expression. What you because you take this one here and put it back. Okay, that's what uh, d y d t of Z M Y. So similar Z M X is something like this. Z M Y, uh, Z M dot Y, or uh, Z M X, uh, Z M Z dot. Okay, so this turns out to be like this. Very similar to what some this kind of expressions actually. Okay. Where delta v x dot delta v y dot uh, is is computed something like this. Okay, so these three comes from like that, and then t go dot we derive this way. So that comes like that. Whereas a t x dot a t y dot and all that they are also coming from some sort of a dynamics actually. Okay, so a t x dot is uh, negative of a t x y tau. They are first order uh, stable dynamics that you are incorporating for the target acceleration component. Okay. In other words, it assumes that target can momentarily put some acceleration, but eventually it it will stay. I mean, if it stays there, then uh, the target acceleration is eventually going to go to zero. Actually, because it cannot continuously keep on accelerating, the vehicle capability may not be there. Actually, okay. All right. So this is uh, this is the formulation. This is the framework of steady equation. Now this delta, I mean this delta r and delta r dot and all can be computed that way also basically. Okay. Now what about output equation? That's uh, is more important. But also remember these are typically inertial components actually, inertial frame components. We, we don't have to forget that actually. Now output equation ultimately remember that we want this uh, outputs are given in the form of range, range rate, gimbal angles, and their rates. But uh, to know this, we also have to have to find out uh, this uh, uh, other variables. What I mean, actually, especially these quantities, okay, lambda i dot, lambda i dot, and all that. So this is the lambda i, lambda i definition sort of thing, and their rates will we we'll need in in our formulation here. So we need to find out uh, this LOS uh, angles essentially and their rates. Okay, so the R R L and R L dot L O L O S separation and the rate rate of change can be directly computed like that because that's uh, that's very easy actually. Okay, these two first two component R L is square root of this part and R L dot is derivative of that actually. So put it back here. Now coming to lambda a and lambda e. Okay, lambda a is this. Uh, okay, lambda e is this this angle. Okay. So this angle can be directly represented as something like uh, 10 inverse delta y by delta z from these two components. Actually, if you, if you formulate this this one, then lambda is nothing but delta y. Okay, okay, you have to see that way somewhere like that. It's parallel to y-axis actually. Anyway, so delta y divided by delta z. Okay, if you if you put a well, let me put that there. If you put it something like this, parallel to the 
this turns out to be perpendicular like that actually anyway. So, this this uh, 10, 10 lambda a is uh, delta y by delta x. So, you can compute it that way. Okay. And then the lambda a dot is derivative of that. Similarly, lambda e you can take it in a different plane this one and this is a projection and then in that projection this, this angle appears like that. So, 10 lambda e is delta x divided by square root of delta y square plus delta z square and then lambda e dot you can you can take derivative of that and write it actually. Okay. So, these components are available especially these two will directly go to our formulation, but these these four components especially lambda e dot and lambda e dot will need that in formulating this uh, I mean this uh, gimbal angle rates actually. So, here all right. So, we, so these are com computed that way. Remember all these delta x delta y happens in the in the inertial component and we need to find it out from the state vector actually. So, this is where this equation comes in handy here. So, if delta x is computed reversely as z m minus delta v times t go. Okay. So, this delta x delta y z delta z can be first computed that way and then they are used here in that form and then you have this these two dots lambda i dot and lambda e dot which will be required in the next slide actually. Also remember this uh, this measurements are uh, typically available in secure gimbal frame and uh, LOS uh, uh, frame information is obtained through a series of transformation actually we will we'll see that actually. Okay. So, this is this is what range we have this and we assume here that the range is corrupted by some noise and then range rate uh, and then gimbal angles are also corrupted by some noise okay. and this gimbal angles are essentially these angles now. Now, we we'll assume that this emissile body axis actually. So, with respect to the body axis what this LOS vector means? These are what we saw with respect to inertial axis. These LOS and what it makes with respect to inertial axis. And here what you tell these LOS and the seeker is typically aligned towards the LOS all the time that is what is another implica implication of that. And then we tell okay this axis what you are seeing here is nothing but uh, uh, this phi and gamma sort of thing. These are uh, I mean phi x phi y typically different people define that way. So, these these angle phi y and phi z ok, well let me put it that way. So, this uh, some small mistakes here probably this is uh, phi y this is phi z actually like that. Anyway, so this uh, these, uh, these angles are represented something like this ok and then these angle angles are represented like that. Now, you can see that there is a transformation matrix involved this uh, C L to uh, this L O S to inertial and then inertial to body actually. So, what you what you are getting here this L O S vector in L O S frame really. So, you see L O S vector in L O S frame is 1 0 0 that one is converted back to inertial frame using this this matrix and then inertial frame to body frame because these are typically available with us actually this this angle informations and all. So, then uh, this can be repre I mean expressed as a function of that. So, th and then that can be substituted here basically. All right. So, this all these th things uh, happen uh, these are all little bit uh, complex looking algebra, but, but especially is attractable algebra it is not much of an issue. All right. So, our formulation finally talks range, range rate, gimbal angles and then their rates okay, these are corrupted by noise everywhere actually. Okay. So, now we have got this output formulation, output equation formulation for the information that are available. Okay, so, essentially we have got what we wanted x dot equal to f of x u and y equal is a, is a function of uh, x actually. Okay, so, now we are ready to implement our common filter use it and then finally, got this information actually. Okay. Uh, all right, all right little detail about that uh, L m n uh, can be represented something like this where this inertial I mean uh, inertial to LOS and uh, inertial to body and body to gimbal these are all computed that way actually. Sometimes it these will need LOS angles with respect to inertial frame these are angles with respect to inertial uh, I mean these are uh, these angles lambda e and lambda a are uh, angles that the LOS frame makes with respect to inertial frame and these are the angles that the LOS makes with respect to body frame. And these are the thing, uh, quaternion component, uh, components essentially contain angles that contain a relationship between uh, inertial frame to body frame actually. So, these things will be heavily used in this formulation sort of thing. 
finally what you are getting what you what you are what you get is uh, going back all the way to the first slide this this one the dm by t go square so we have got some sort of estimated value of the dm and t go so we want to go back and see what we can do okay now this one okay the same thing but remember the zdm uh, xyz components are computed now in the inner cell frame so if you simply put this uh, this thing that happens to be in the inner cell component now what you really need is body component so finally we again use this uh, this inner cell to body uh, transformation to uh, convert this uh, this components to the body components and also remember uh, in the terminal phase typically there is no lateral acceleration along uh, x axis well it not typically called lateral acceleration it no acceleration along uh, okay x axis so this, this word lateral is probably not required because y at z it is called lateral acceleration it is called axial acceleration here okay but typically you can say that okay acceleration along x axis cannot be realized so we ignore that okay and we rather leave with the fact that okay as, as long as t go estimation is good it will, it will also take care of that and then uh, the key point to note here is there is no lag between estimation and gradients okay you do all this heavy algebra and then pass it through kalman filter things like that the, with the whole motivation that finally i don't have to realize in a loop synthesis sort of thing i want to avoid that so this is what it is uh, done here we tell okay body body components can be realized something like this actually Okay. All right. So uh, then, this y, a y c, and a z c can be given to the uh, the sort of pilot uh, logic, basically. And that is also done here, actually. In other words, somebody can stop here and then take okay only three D point mass model and start simulating and things like that. That may be a first cut validation of the concept. But if you are really talking about uh, real validation of i uh, g and things like that. we have to pass it through the the, the real uh, autopilot uh, synthesis loop as well and see what is the performance actually so this is what is done here details i will not talk i think uh, one of the previous lectures we have also talked a little bit about that we have this uh, lateral acceleration coming and this uh, auxiliary roll angle sort of thing command is also coming okay in other words delta c dot is nothing but uh, i mean delta dot, i mean zeta dot is nothing but p and uh, what you are looking for this equation sort of thing is uh, i mean uh, this essentially okay you will not worry so much on that what you are telling is this pc can be direct, it may not be coming here also okay for simplicity this may not be felt but here you can assume that pc is zero okay so you can uh, you can do that also basically so ultimately what you need is roll rate stabilization roll rate should go to zero angle of roll which uh, what particular angle it stabilizes it doesn't really matter that much actually okay yeah. all right so this is this can be done this way also then you convert it outer loop and then go to the inner loop control and then there is some sort of a fin deflection logic you put it back uh, and then delta 1 to that actuator thing you pass it through with uh, with uh, rate limits and, and position limits also then finally whatever numbers you get it combine back and then kind of simulate back actually so these details are hidden here okay so just for simplicity we are given in this way sort of thing all right so the output uh, command transfer is uh, when you do it here it is done this uh, typically this way this uh, ayc dot and azc dot are computed like this the first order error dynamic sort of thing and then you assume that okay azc actually is a, is a function of uh, alpha only so az okay az dot is okay something like this this comes from this one az is assumed to be a function of alpha only so az dot is typically a del az by uh, del alpha okay into alpha dot okay so when i compute my alpha dot I'll, this is the, you can reverse compute it that way so this is nothing but uh, az dot okay multiplied uh, by uh, del alpha okay one by essentially az dot uh, into one by del az by del alpha okay so this can be inverted back on that actually assuming continuity so this is how it is computed this is uh, what you see here uh, in the alpha c command actually all right so this is how it is alpha c command you get it that way beta c also equivalently that way ay is a purely a function of beta you assume there and then get it that way 
So, then you get this P c is 0, ok that is what is put P c 0, Q c and R c can be computed from alpha c dot and beta c dot that way, ok details are the we will not talk too much here actually. Then once you have this uh, uh, this commanded body rates, so then you can go back and put the, this kind of a dynamics now and then realize the control surface deflection actually, ok. And these components as I told are decomposed into fin deflection commands and then fed to the actuator, ok. If it is a real missile flight, you stop there, you fed it to actuator, actuator responds and then go ahead and uh, apply it actually. In a simulation, it is also passed through a second order dynamics to mimic the uh, actuator dynamics and then it is also passed through rate and magnitude bounds and then combined back into the into this form again ok. Now, that will be the realized deltas I mean these are these are commanded deltas once you take it through that that will be realized deltas and then those are the values that will be fed to the system dynamics for simulation actually ok. So, this is how the simulation is carried out. Now, coming to some quick results sort of thing these are simulation results R R dot 5 5 z and things like that. Some of these numbers are available in the in the paper also, you can see some of that actually if you really want to have an idea of what kind of numbers have been used and all that. Okay. Now, results uh, are typically done in uh, three cases, one is uh, the target doing a step maneuver and a little bit surprise towards end also, okay. first uh, some sort of step and then after some time in a different step maneuver sort of thing and then you have a sinusoidal maneuver and then finally, some sort of a ballistic target actually. Okay. So, this is uh, what the command is given to the target ok, they assume that ok the final t go is 4 seconds, the time to go is essentially 4 seconds available. So, within 2 to 4 this uh, these commands are given 3 g sort of thing and if you less than 2 ok, less than 2 seconds towards the very end target does exactly the opposite actually ok, it kind of tries to surprise the surprise the missile sort of thing okay. and these are very common maneuvers done by aircrafts also ok. So, if you do that then this is the interceptor and this is the, this is the target trajectory and this is the intercept trajectory and it does not feel like uh, there is any anything that matters even if the target does uh, separate I mean surprise maneuvers actually. As long as there is some t go I mean obviously with the very very final moment if somebody does it uh, I mean very close to the t t go 0 somebody does a quick uh, surprise maneuver probably that may be difficult to do. But you have something like 2 seconds to go, it is uh, is not small, I mean it is not big, it is also uh, very small in some sense, but still you have to go at 2 seconds to go basically. So, whether you, your estimation guidance control uh, responds to that or not. I remember all uh, if you if you look at one of my previous lecture, it also talks about these problems, uh, I mean these formulations are very critical when uh, time to go is less actually. So, from here onwards when t go is less than 0, you can think of, think of that as a new problem. And in this new problem, you know, the time to go is really 2 seconds, I mean this is very, very small. So, whether it can really do the job, now the picture tells us that yes, it can do the job actually. Okay. And then this are, these are the pictures in, in Z and Y and these are the pictures in Z and X actually. Okay. So, this same thing are decomposed into two image planes or two image figures sort of thing, and this is done that way. Okay. You can see that uh, both the towards the end here as well as here, they are meeting very close actually. Okay. That is why the mist distance is very less. And also you have to see the as I told in Kalman filter uh, class there is a consistency issue and things like that. So, uh, you have to put this uh, consistency check at least. So, this uh, sigma bound test sort of thing. So, you have this one sigma uh, taken from P matrix and those are the bounds plus or minus square root of one sigma and then ultimately the estimated value comes within that bound. Okay. So, that is the validation check. Okay, this these ZDMs are computed very good that sense. And then you can see this uh, this error delta x delta y delta z uh, they are also coming with the bound. Momentarily they are going out because that is the point where things are uh, I mean the target is doing a surprise maneuver actually. Okay. But again within very small time it comes back and then uh, your estimation is very good and followed by response is also good. So, you are able to capture the target actually. Okay. And this uh, this times are typically given in normalized time units and then uh, I mean the, we do not want to reveal the exact time the simulation and things like that. So, the very typical I mean accepted practice world over actually. So, do not go by the numbers in the time here they are not absolute quantities actually. All right. So, this is this is the point here ok. Then so all the other variables also you can see the target acceleration here it does a surprise maneuver 
but very quickly the error comes down that means we are able to know what the target is doing very quickly actually okay. and you can also see this uh, measurement uh, error versus estimated error and things like that uh, so that's another sort of uh, test actually this is a kind of whiteness test and all that actually so residual thing or whatever uh, y minus uh, your cx hat if you remember that uh, that has to be white actually. So, in the, if you plot it, it should feel that okay, the blue line has to be some sort of a white noise, whereas the estimated one should be some sort of a smooth curve actually. Okay, so that is what you see here, and that validates one more thing actually. Okay, now these are the lateral oscillations in three components, and the, the fin deflections, uh, delta Q, delta R, they are all within bounds actually. The, the bounds are uh, plus or minus 30 degrees typically. So, they are all within the bound is able to capture the target in a good sense. Now, finally, there is something like a Monte Carlo simulation that means you randomize simulation you take random initial conditions of the uh, missile random target uh, initial conditions uh, things like that and then uh, you do repeated simulations and then finally, come up with some mean and standard deviation. So, this is done for 100 runs like that. Okay. Then the mean and standard deviation out of these 100 test case simulations happens to be something like this mean is 0.8 okay, and then this uh, standard deviation is uh, 0.12. So, even if you take uh, mu plus 3 sigma is some sort of error finally. So, this happens to be 3 sigma is 0.36. So, 0.36 plus 0 0.8 uh, is something like 0. Uh, uh, well 0 0.8 plus 0 0.36 uh, point to, uh, I mean 1.1 sort of thing 1.16 sort of thing. So, 1.1, 1.2 meters level of accuracy you are getting that means almost uh, I mean if it is a classical uh, aircraft target it is actually a, a hit to kill actually you will be able to hit the target. All right. So, this is what it is ok then this uh, uh, we will also done something like uh, random perturbation of this uh, this aerodynamic parameters actually ok. So, aerodynamic parameters are taken as something like plus minus 10 percent and, and things like that and evaluated at some sort of kernel points values actually. You take all these uh, plus 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 perturbations all these uh, kind of minus 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 perturbation some plus some minus like that actually ok. So, then uh, then you repeat repeatedly simulate again and then take the standard and mean and standard deviation. These 100 test cases are done for each of the cases like this ok and then uh, then do some sort of mean and standard deviation sort of thing and uh, it turns out that the numbers are the are uh, uh, even if you take the worst case scenario probably that one turns out to be. So, um, 3 I mean 3 um, into 0.6 is uh, 1.8 plus 1.2. So, some 1.3. So, 3.1. So, so, about uh, 3 meters uh, um, missed distance is the worst case scenario actually. And the, the, the essentially the message is it, it works uh, very well ok and it works even if the time to go is very small that is another point actually. Okay. Then the last case is ok the next case is uh, sinusoidal maneuver if you does something like this what happens the target comes like that but you are able to predict what the target is doing through the estimation process and hence we are having a good engagement. Now, here, here you can see this, this plane it is good but that plane is not very good ok because missile is here and I mean target is here missile is here. So, it is some degree of uh, error basically, but uh, what also remember this is actually flat error that means this separation is not very good not very high. So, that is why the accuracy is not very good actually ok. Again similar behavior ok you can see all this is going coming down. What you need really remember is ultimately Z m by T go square. So, as long as Z m estimation is very good and T go estimation is also very good ok then things will be falling in place actually okay. and obviously, this uh, velocity level because the target is continuously doing some sinusoidal maneuver sort of thing going this way that way all that. This is not exactly bounded between uh, 1 sigma values, but if you really put 2 sigma 3 sigma bounds then it will come back in within that actually. So, these are ATX, uh, ATY the target resolution components in XYZ uh, then your T go and remember T go 1 sigma bound is so good I mean so high whereas the estimation value is so good ok. The estimated T go information what you are getting and what the actual T go is is very close to 0. So, here we have this uh, ZM components are estimated very good and T go is also estimated extremely good that is the reason why everything works very nicely actually okay. again similar set of behavior and uh, ok I do not want to keep on 
Okay, this is the commanded value and achieved value were, were very good that also tells us that the autopilot synthesis is very good. Okay. Again the mean and standard deviation sense it is very very small again we have this 0 0.32 times point, uh, this one is 0 0.07 in this case 7 centimeter other. So, and then uh, the level I mean the confidence is, is very, you know, very good actually. Again similar exercise and then similar results also what you get 1.3 and 0.6 here. Uh, what about a ballistic target where the target comes in a straight line, but there is some some dissolution due to drag and all that, it, but it cannot maneuver. Okay, so in that situation, this is uh, this is coming that way, and this uh, missile is going and engaging there. Okay, this 2D plane again similar sort of behavior. TGO estimation is also good here, and the DM is also good here, and then. Uh, uh, all other things are very similar. So, you can also see the the body rates commanded and achieved are also nice. Only towards the end there is some problem, but that is uh, that is expected actually. Okay, but lateral acceleration is expected to change drastically towards the end actually because essentially the guidance uh, operates on the PN philosophy. Okay, so the one of the drawbacks of PN guidance is towards the end the, there there will be lateral singularity and all that actually. So that will be here uh, as well. So again the mean and tunnel deviation turns out to be very small, uh, this is 0 0.4 times 3 sigma even if you take it is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 plus 0 0.4 is something like 1.2 around that figure. So, essentially it is also good, uh, again perturbation studies and then your results are also good, okay. there is nothing to be alarmed and the worst case scenario turns out to be about 2, 3 meters, I mean that is the message actually. So, the, a small conclusion about this particular work uh, is something like uh, it is a new method, new technique uh, of integrated estimation and guidance okay. and the design uh, essentially is not very difficult. The only difficulty I see is how do you put the output equation. Once you understand how do you put the output equation in the form of static, I mean, uh, I mean uh, in the form that is required that uh, y equal h of x, then everything will fall into place actually. All other things are rather straightforward sort of thing. Various target cases you demonstrated, and then it also tells that uh, the wish distance turn satisfies this uh, hit to kill requirement actually. Okay. So this is that part, this part of the work. Now the second part, we talk about uh, integrated estimation, guidance, and control. So the, the all the three things are taken together, and this is the subsequent follow-up work of this one uh, in presented in 2011 GNC rather. And also just a comment this both the papers uh, we are trying to kind of put it into a journal paper and then try to see whether it can be published in some sort of a uh, journal paper in the in a little more polished results and then uh, some some cons small concerns address a uh, little more rigorously like that actually. Let us see whether that is there or not I cannot say but the, these two references are already available you can read it actually. So, the features of the proposed integrated estimation guidance control is just as I told before in estimation guidance and outer loop of the control is uh, is kind of used they are together. So, in some sense you can also in interpret this as something like a partially integrated estimator guidance and control. Remember the last lecture I talked about partial IGC. So, this is something like uh, partial IGC basically. So, that is what we are talking here. And then uh, something like what we are in interested is uh, the necessary body rate commands are uh, evaluated directly. There is no lateral acceleration command. We want to uh, kind of estimate or kind of know the desired but body rate commands directly. So the states are uh, very similar to what we have done before. ZDM relative velocity, target acceleration and time to go. Now, the filtering part uh, of, the, of the problem or estimation part of the problem remains very same as what is done before. Only the, the instead of going through a lateral acceleration generation and then realizing it through a body rate through a loop sort of thing, we want to see whether we can uh, do a little alternate way and then kind of uh, from ZDM itself can we put it uh, some sort of a direct body rate command generation actually. Alright, so it's actually borrows this idea of time scale separation between GNC, GNC loops. Uh, so similarly, this also is uh, retained here because the inner loop is not fused. Okay, inner loop is still separate actually. Okay. Alright, so this is uh, what you are talking here. There is outer loop, there is inner loop. Okay, and what you are talking here is this part of the design is is together. Okay. Alright. 
So, this looks like this estimator, guidance and outer loop all together then we pass through inner loop and then feed it to the plant actually. All right, so very similar. So I do not want to repeat all the things. Uh, these are all uh, state equation. These are same states. Uh, so and estimation part of the formulation remains exactly identical. So I don't have to. This is the philosophy. It uh, borrows the idea of uh, a little simplification of notation. Instead of ZDM, we have written as Z. Okay. So that represents Z represents ZDM and all that. But other things are very similar to what you have done before. These are the, this is the ZDM in y direction, the rate and then relative velocity dot and all t go dot and all that actually. And this is all happens, I mean we have explained uh, just a couple of minutes back that this state equation can be realized this way. Okay. Now output equation, uh, I mean uh, this, okay, the small diff, okay, instead of ZDM, okay, we have just uh, rewritten in terms of Z actually, that is the only difference here between these two slides actually. Okay. All right. So the after that, uh, the the output equation exactly remains identical as before. So these these things also I don't have to kind of explain too much. This is uh, range and range rate, and then this LOS angles and the rates, especially the rates, will be used in the, in this formulation here. So the finally we have this range, uh, and then the range rate, and the gimbal angles, and then the rates actually. Okay. Then here is a new concept. After getting the ZDM, okay, we do not want to kill generate this PN sort of guidance, the ZDM by T go square and all that actually. What is, uh, well, there is one more small comment before I uh, go, okay, no, no, it is all right. We need the state, I mean, this estimation for part of the formulation remains identical. Then what you need is instead of going through this lateral acceleration generation and all that, we want to enforce this sort of error dynamics and this part is derived uh, kind of motivated from uh, from dynamic inversion or, or feedback generation philosophy actually. So, we want to put finally remember what is the guidance problem, guidance problem essentially talks about ZDM going to 0 as T goes to or T go goes to 0 basically really. Okay. So, this equation if you if you put it that I mean if you put it that way when T go goes to 0 T goes in I mean T goes to T f. And if you assume T f is infinity, I mean and that the infinity is subjected to the selection of gains and all that. If your gains are very high, uh, even 4 seconds can be infinity really. So, if you assume that your T f is, uh, is high, uh, so that so my gains are very high, so that whatever T f is there, that can be interpreted as infinity. Then this equation can, can be put it, I mean we can, can be put, so that when T goes to infinity, that means T go goes to 0, okay. T goes to infinity means T goes in T f that means t go goes to 0. So, when that t go goes to 0, then z and z dot also will go to 0, remember that. Not just z, z will go to 0, that is our objective, but in this uh, this one z will go to 0 and z dot will also go to 0 basically. So, that is another degree of good thing because any any uh, inaccuracy of uh, t go estimation, suppose there is a small error there, then because z dot is also 0, it will not blow up suddenly. It is, okay. So, z will remain to be 0 for a little time at least actually. So, that, that means a small amount of uh, uncertainty in TV estimation will also be tolerated here. Okay. All right. So, coming back to this, uh, this is uh, how it is. Uh, this uh, this equation is what we want to enforce where omega and zeta are design parameters. So essentially, this is one gain and this is two gain, I mean another gain, position gain and rate gain sort of thing can be imagined that way. Then z double dot can be, I mean, you have got this uh, this z dot equation. So from here you put one more derivative, z double dot, and, and estimate all that actually. Okay. All right. So z double dot is delta v dot plus all this uh, can be taken. But here you will come across this t go double dot also, and that is what you are assuming to be zero. It need not be zero, but you are assuming to be zero, and uh, that assumes that okay, t t go really doesn't change that drastically. It can change, the change is also captured in T go dot, but T go double dot level you do not have to capture, it is it's assumed to be 0. Then the, with the simplification and assuming, I mean knowing that delta V dot is nothing but this, you can actually put it Z double dot is something coming from he, coming sorry this one, this one is nothing but that and coming like this and then these two terms are combined to write it that way actually. Okay. Now remember, it's not at minus m; it is at dot minus m dot actually. Okay, so from this equation, we can write that at m dot is something like this. Okay, and then m dot is uh, is something like lateral acceleration rate sort of thing, 
and this has three components again and these three components what you see here are uh, can be so remember this is what was used in the in the inner loop of the autopilot synthesis atm dot i mean this is this is what we we purposefully generated assuming az is a function of purely alpha and ay is a function of purely beta now it is actually directly available from this expression sort of thing okay, you can use it then alpha c and beta c are all the generated that way and then you you have this uh, generated body rates that qc and rc actually and again similar things are there the little bit slightly different pictures which uh, takes a little bit more details about autopilot design sort of thing it's it's incorporated here so more in detail more details can be found in the paper let me not uh, i mean explain too much here all right so summary of this uh, this uh, i g c i mean uh, integrated guidance control and estimation what you are talking or uh, i g c also i mean some people call it different ways uh, whatever it is the summary of philosophy is like this out uh, guidance and outer loop control uh, is integrated as well as estimation as also basically okay this is the bottom line actually okay so results uh, something like this uh, again the results are generated using six star platform and uh, we have a second order actuator dynamics here and for sensing the body rates and acceleration a second order gyro and acceleration model is also used and then the realistic seeker model has been used for generating seeker measurements as well okay so all these things are part of the six star formulation actually six star simulation platform and again the same cases aircraft maneuvering with step maneuver and then with sinusoidal maneuver then finally ballistic target so how does it think we, this p not q r can be slightly different than what we what we have uh, as much as possible mostly similar values and then this, these are the results actually okay you have the similar case of uh, target comes with one acceleration and some sort of uh, towards the end it changes its acceleration and all that actually okay and here it is uh, okay you can see there are two two times it changes actually okay one time it changes here okay initially then after some time it changes some value then uh, towards the very end it also changes some other value actually okay so that uh, all that thing are happening here but still we are able to capture that actually okay now let's so uh, anyway so this is how it is uh, so the uh, Okay. All right. So this is how it is. Uh, uh, the the results are like this. Uh, your ZDM X Y Z components uh, are estimated again very well, and this this one is momentarily out because there is a target acceleration uh, here as well as something like here. Okay. So we have this uh, these things uh, given there. Uh, anyway, these values what you see are normalized times again. So. the actual time can be of order of 3 4 seconds but what you see here is is normalized values and all that actually okay then anyway, that doesn't matter but what it what it matters is toward there are double surprises towards the end but still you are able to get it very very good okay and you can see how this body rates are followed so that means uh, this autopilot design is also good there is a small amount of delay here okay but that delay doesn't uh, matter too much uh, in in estimation uh, in uh, final mist distance actually then finally there is a sinusoidal maneuver i mean the next there is a sinusoidal maneuver so similar maneuver sort of thing again the results are good gdm estimation is extremely good here almost zero uh, in this compon this components at least only z direction there is some value uh, which is which results in some mistations actually all right so uh, but remember this xyz is not uh, the body xyz these are all inertial xyz you, then you convert it back to body components and then Uh, that happens automatically in this formulation of that actually okay so this is what it is and then the results are something like this you can see this uh, the finally the experiment with respect to a ballistic target a uh, ballistic target comes like that uh, as i told before it cannot maneuver but there is a big amount of deceleration so as far as target i mean the problem of missile guidance is considered it appears like a maneuver okay target when target deceleration happens in axial direction also then 3d sense it is actually nothing but a maneuver okay it has it it uh, sees the deceleration in the axial axis anyway basically okay. so even then it is able to capture that in a good sense okay this also you can see there is no difference visually you cannot see any difference between both the 
I mean both the two diploids actually. Okay, so these are the results, and then finally going to the Monte Carlo simulation sort of thing. Again, you can see that mean and standard deviation values are 1.1, 0.5, then 1.4 like that actually here. So if you take 1.1, 0.5 as the worst case scenario, and 0.5 is uh, one sigma, three sigma is 1.5, 1.5 plus 1.1 is 2.6 sort of thing. So that happens to be the worst case mean distance actually within the scenario considered in all these simulations actually. And this is the histogram sort of uh, sort of picture that we typically give. Uh, from larger simulation studies and all, so if you get 100 Monte Carlo runs, this is what you'll get in conventional design. Okay, that means you are guaranteed to capture everything. Okay, within two meters mesh distance, let's say, but here the mesh distance will reduce it to 1.1 sort of thing. Okay, so this picture tells us comparatively how 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 much benefit you'll get by incorporating this this integrated design approaches actually. Okay. So, summary sense so this is uh, uh, what you see here okay. and this is the conventional approach where you have outer loop, inner loop all sort of things the guidance is computed that way uh, and this is not fused I mean if you fuse it then this is IEG this will happen here it is not fused actually. So, this is conventional way of doing things this is uh, integrated estimation guidance design way of doing things actually. So, conclusions uh, essentially uh, it is also a new idea, new integrated estimation guidance and control algorithm okay, that is what we have proposed. But also you can see other literatures, uh, various literature has appeared uh, from, from various uh, people. You can see that different ideas are popping up uh, for this uh, design approach. And essentially the second order ZDM dynamics is the key here. Okay, this if you go back uh, the formulation part of it, what was the difference? The main difference in my view is, is this one. Once you have this and then, then compute that way, then rest of the things you compute directly using these components actually. Okay. These components you then take body components and all that actually. Okay. All right. So, that is the key difference actually. Okay. All right. So, then this new IAGC formulation has its own uh, like a substantial improvement in various interception scenario. And also remember somebody can tell what is big deal from 2 meters to kind of 1.1, 0.9 meters. Well, that is the that is the real uh, story. I mean, the going close to that, suppose somebody wants let us say 20 meter mesh distance and that is that is a very doable problem in any case. That is standard, it is taken, uh, taken for granted that it can be done. But when you go closer and closer, you want real hit to kill sort of behavior and you want to be within this uh, kind of 1 meter level accuracy, 2 meter level accuracy like that, the problems get tougher and tougher. And even here what you see in the blue line in the conventional way, but conventional way also contains nonlinear autopilot actually remember that. If you, if you put the classical autopilot, it may still happen to be about 5, 6 meter mesh distance. And it also talks about innovation way, innovative way of filtering. I mean, this is just, uh, I mean, if you do not have that, again go for uh, classical filtering sort of thing, the mystery distance can be of the order of 10 meters. So, all these benefits, if you put a good filter, a good tuning, and then put a only in autopilot uh, there, uh, and then that is reduced to 2 meter. Now, you bring into the IEGC concepts and all, then you can reduce it to 1 meter. Okay. So, things like that uh, you should not uh, forget actually. As you go closer and closer, the ball game is much, much, much more difficult actually. So, so, so this this is what you are getting uh, advantage by in, by invoking this uh, this integrated design approach actually. And especially these are important when your T goes is very small. Okay. Target does surprise maneuvers at the end, which are uh, also true for ballistic missile interception in a way. Because uh, towards the very end, the when the missile is uh, in the atmosphere, we are talking about endo atmosphere interception, then uh, the target may not be doing intentional maneuver, but it can just happen because of the physics that the target can go through spiral maneuver, which is also a surprise at the end actually. So, these considerations can uh, motivate us to do more and more and then uh, extract every piece of thing that you can be extracted from the problem really actually. Okay, so, modern uh, control theory, modern optimal control, nonlinear control, everything comes into picture, estimation theory, everything comes into picture to realize this, this dream of going and hitting the target actually in a way. Okay. So, in a broad sense, uh, the broad conclusions are something like this, integrated designs are typically more natural to the flight vehicles because flight vehicle does not understand what is point mass, what is six drop and all that. The physics happens in the, I mean in the detail level only. 
So, the integrated designs are typically more natural because six of dynamics is, is directly used and they typically derive a lot of uh, synergy between various subsystems and the necessity of having a compatible point mass equation is also avoided. Integrated designs lead to better performance in general that we have seen it also and integrated designs can be proposed in following various philosophies that is integrated guidance and control, integrated estimation guidance as well as integrated estimation guidance and uh, integrated estimation guidance and control all together sort of thing. So, this is the, this is what it is uh, more on that you can see again in these two papers and then various other papers that other people have also proposed actually. So, with that comment I will stop here thank you.